Hey. How are you? Jay, I'm good. Oh, hello everyone out there on Facebook. I'm JQ. This is Greta Q. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Greta. You have a familiar background behind you. Yes. I'm in TQ's office. Um, this is the spot where many, many a small flower TV video. <laughs> um, so we thought since T's in the car and driving through Michigan right now, um, you and I would take today together and we were thinking about what we could talk about. And what we are experts in together, and we are clearly experts in babies. Yes. Yes, I would say so. Um, we've had, we had three kids in under four years. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, that out loud. Oh. Um, yeah, it, it was kind of an intense period, but it was fun. And... <laughs> and uh painful um yes uh but you know it was four days less than four years when our third was born and um and i don't know i was just i've been reading this book that you gave me mm -hmm. this book raising a rare girl and yeah. i highly recommend it to anyone who is anybody actually not just people who have a special needs kid but um but anyone it's a really beautiful memoir and it um i would say really nails the um some of the systemic sort of problems and pressure we put on expectant mothers as a society yeah yeah well I, I was thinking a lot about um you know i'm slightly uncomfortable with like the the title of like baby expert <laughs> because uh um, <sighs> you know there's just so much that gets thrown at you when you're pregnant and when you're a new parent um and a and not even a new parent, right? Um, there's so much kind of like, um, so many rules that get thrown at you and, and you have to do this and you have to do that. And, you know, I think especially um, for, for women who are pregnant, you know, right now there's a real like, um, there's a lot of opinion, strong opinions about natural births and kind of like, you know, and there's a lot of value placed on that. and. You know, I think that um, the thing that, that that book illustrates and that book, Raising a Rare Girl, is about, um, is a memoir, one woman's experience with her daughter who has this uh, genetic syndrome called wolf Hirschhorn syndrome. Um, and it's really, it's about the first five years of her daughter's life. So it's kind of about like all the curveballs that got thrown at her and then how she you know, as a mother and as a person had to kind of roll with them. And, and I think the lesson there is like, even if you don't have a special needs kid, like you just don't know what is going to happen. You don't know who this person is going to be, who comes out of you and who enters your life. And you don't know how your birth is going to go. You don't, you don't know if it's going to go smoothly, if there are going to be challenges. And so, and that, you know, so the minute you become I, the minute I became pregnant it became massively clear to me that this was like something I couldn't control <laughs> yeah. you know um and that kind of is like the first lesson of parenting you know you control what you can and you try to set a good example and you try to treat yourself well and the people you love well and then you just have to kind of roll with it <laughs> it's certainly true that is certainly true um can I just say really fast, I'm usually the person who's behind the scenes responding to comments. So you all are going to have to um, self-regulate a little. Um, yeah, no, I got the comments up if that's oh, okay. Good. Um, that. Papa Q is here. T says, hey, TQ is much better looking today. <laughs> um, and Mary Josephine says, hey there. Hi. 
Um, so I'll be like looking back and forth a little bit, but I can't. I can only do so much, Greta. Just like your previous little statement. I can only do so much. Um, anyway, the, um, you know, I think that, um, I think the, this book is making me sort of realize sort of like the unfair pressure that is put on you. And, and, uh, I think we learned very quickly during our pregnancies that, um, that you can intend and desire like a natural birth and for everything to go smoothly, <laughs> but, but, that, that, but that that's not necessarily how it's going to go. And that's not necessarily um, a bad thing. Yeah. Um, and that mostly I want to say that that's not a failure, you know? Um, and I feel like too many when you go to a, a birthing class, there is this pedestal raised. They put the the natural births on a and and mm -hmm. drug free births and non c and non c section births on a pedestal, and that that is to be strived for in a dangerous way that makes um, any birth that doesn't go according to your birth plan um, feel like a failure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I and have a lot of, I have a lot of friends who've had that experience. I have to say, I've also had friends who, you know, had natural births and, you know, births in water that were amazing. Um, I've had people who had friends who've had epidurals who were like, that was great. People had epidurals who were, had really challenging situations. Um, people who had, you know, planned, um, uh, were induced, planned C-sections. I mean, myself, my our first baby was no epidural. Our second baby was epidural. And our third baby was a C-section. That was a planned C-section. But, but, the, it, she, but she decided. A day early, so it became an emergency C-section. So, yeah. So, you know, not that there's only, to be. Like, not so, that there's only three or four kinds of births, but um, but uh, but that's a pretty good sample size yeah. um, of different of different things on the spectrum, um, which is kind of interesting. Uh, let's just stop for a second and talk about what we're drinking. We're drinking fennel tea, mm -hmm. um, which is an excellent tea for expectant mothers, for postpartum, um, to keep the the your own milk um as uh you know gas free as possible for the baby just to give extra digestive aid in the breast milk let's just say that um people use it diluted and give drops to the baby you've seen it in gripe water there's a you know there's products out there that generally just make that for you but but the Romanians in the store and the Germans in the store have been doing that for years before there was a, a product, uh, you know, that you could also find in Target called gripe water, you know, yeah. um, they've been making it out of that tea forever. Um, and the, the tea we usually sell is we, as the Romanians call it, baby tea is um, anise, fennel and caraway. Is that uh, what you're drinking? Anise, fennel, fennel, kümmel. Um, for the Germans. Um, hi to John G says, I love giving up control. He liked the way you put that. Mary Josephine says, I love fennel. I ate roasted fennel last night. Yeah, we are obsessed mm -hmm. with fennel in our house, right? Oh my God, yeah. I mean, we make our own broth all the time using fennel and we roast fennel um, with the salmon recipe with the... Um, yes. Blood oranges and fennel is an incredible Sitka salmon, Sitka salmon recipe with blood oranges and fennel. And then oh we have another new recipe that we've been use, doing, which is um, it's from Kitchen, you know, K-I-T-C-H-N. And it's um, a roasted chicken thigh recipe with fennel and like lemon. So much lemon. 
and salt and pepper and it's just so good and tons of olive oil yeah and you've been actually taking the what do you call it? the prawns is that what they're called the prawns prawns yeah <laughs> the pond you've been taking the frogs in the pond the fronds the fron. and, the uh, and grinding them up and putting them in our um meatballs for the kids yeah um which is giving them a much more authentically italian flavor mm -hmm. than like putting in dried italian seasoning which we do as well because weeknights you gotta get it done but so jay you're drinking you're actually drinking baby tea right no no i'm just doing oh. the funnel as well. okay okay so yeah the um this tea will and we'll link all, everything we talk about up afterwards um obviously that won't be happening in real time but um but yeah, the, the tea that I drank that Jay was just talking about, fennel, anise, caraway seeds, um, is a super popular tea um, from Salus. Um, and we are currently, we're, we're out of it. We have a big shipment coming yeah. mid-August. And it'll be back next be, month, right? There will be some some there. But, you know, to be honest, we're ha I was just talking to Alex, our buyer, and um, and we're having some trouble getting, getting that product in general right now. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's some quarantine babies, you know? quarantine it's babies. <laughs> it, it's worth, um, it's worth just kind of making your own perhaps, you know, and yeah. I'll chat with Lisa about that too. Yeah. Maybe we can make a bulk version, just one third anise, one third fennel, one third caraway. I think that's worth doing. Yeah. Um, and we would, you know, I would. I had all my babies in the summer. And so um, we would just make that a big, big jug of iced tea. And I would just kind of sip on it all day. Um, and it was really lovely and refreshing. And, um, you know, like, I think for me, the thing with tea and I've drank different, I'm really a, first and foremost a coffee drinker, but I've come to really love tea um, since meeting you. <laughs> and, um, and the thing about the, that baby tea and about all teas, you know, I drank ginger tea during my pregnancy. I'm drinking a lot of chamomile tea right now. So it's just like a practice in taking a moment for yourself. Um, just like a little bit of self-care. Um, and you and T have talked about this too, but I think that that's a, a really important lesson for moms to I haven't learned it. I'm working, <laughs> constantly working on it, but um, just kind of taking, taking a moment and taking care of yourself. And for me, yeah. that's what that tea was about. Yeah. And I, I love the, I like it iced actually a lot and just like a dash of sparkling water in it in a big tall glass with a metal straw and a slice of lemon. I remember making that for you every summer, you know, every every other summer every other for summer. the past six summers so yeah um um you know um let's talk a little bit about um now that we've discussed the tea mm -hmm. itself and i've been reading this book about babies and like it's just kind of on the mind yeah. can we talk about like some of your and my must-haves for when there's a new baby around. I, I just feel like there are a lot of babies being born right now. And, you know, there's, there's, you know, people have joked, oh, in quarantine, there's gonna be a surge 10 months from now. Well, most of the studies show there's gonna be a dip actually. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, because I think people are a little freaked out. So if they're trying, they're gonna put it off for a little bit. Um, uh, so, you know, but the babies being born during this um, time, during this pandemic are, they were, you know, nobody had any clue this was coming. And so um, what are some things people can do to take care of themselves and spoil themselves a little bit, potentially, um, maybe have around so that they're not like running out and getting exposed? Um or and or maybe the third thing if you know someone who's had a baby during this time and you don't want to be like sending them something like medical you know what i mean like yeah. what is something you can do that just feels thoughtful is potentially beneficial mm -hmm. but isn't like 
here's something scary that you have to take, right? Well, I mean, I remember, I remember it's so, it's so moving, you know, like when we, especially when we had our first baby, you do, you get so many, so many gifts, so many people dropping off food. Like it's really moving to, to have your community step up like that. And, um, and I, you know, I hope that this quarantine is not keeping people from doing that because it's a really important, important thing, I think for new parents, because it can feel very isolating, um, actually having a new baby. But so I remember um, uh, Jen Hansen, right, sent us just a giant box of diapers. <laughs> and I was like, that's brilliant. It's a huge case of newborn diapers from Can the Hansen wrong? family. She wrote from the Hansen family, just like everybody. They I absolutely need diapers. Um, and then just meals, like, you know, people dropping off lasagnas and stews and- Yeah, also- my cousin Mac brought us a giant oh, thing of yeah. ziti with sausage ziti, and we yeah. ate it for two weeks straight. Yes, amazing. And I, I'll never forget when Pete, our friend Pete, went to Superdog and brought me a vanilla milkshake, and I just lay in bed, like, three <laughs> days after having JJ drinking a vanilla milkshake so happy. yeah i remember he was like what would you dream of right now you're like super dog he's like i'll be there this afternoon yeah yeah um but then you know i would say what i what i sometimes say to parents when they're like what should we what should we have on hand you know it's in truth you don't need a lot like when your baby's first born hopefully you know assuming that they're everyone's healthy right um you know, for moms who have vaginal births, um, our friend AG gave me great advice, which is just steal as much stuff from the hospital as you possibly can <laughs> before you leave. <laughs> so like blankets and, you know, sanitary napkins, pads, diapers. Backs. I remember just filling a backpack. As much stuff as you can steal, do it. Um, and, um, And then, you know, the other thing that T told us is like, just slather them in diaper cream all the time. And I think- I remember it. They had, I was actually kind of living with them Mm -hmm. when Safi had like incredible diaper rash and he, um, and they just started putting it on after every single diaper change and they never stopped and she never had it again. And we um, have never, had a what one of our JJ for a while got a little the beginnings of it um, because he was at a daycare where they were not doing that. Yeah. Um, and but we've never dealt with it because we just took diaper cream after every change, and yeah. it. and it's just like I never want to deal with this, right? Yeah. Why not? Um, I mean, the other thing that I always. I recommend, you know, is you already mentioned it, but gripe water, um, giving, you know, it's a, it's similar to the, the diaper cream there. These are things that you can just do preventatively. You don't have to pull these out once they have a rash or once they have colic, like we just kind of gave, you know, always slathered our kids butts and cream and always gave them gripe water just a couple times a day, small. Yeah. Amounts. Abdul, you know, the is our my our dad and the pharmacist but he also is you know was born in india and he said that there's there's no they don't wait till they have the problem there every kid gets grape water four or five times a day they just do it all the time and he said that he doesn't remember and doesn't hear about um colicky griping kind of problems as much there um, as he does here and so, you know, for us, that was enough. So we just started doing it three, four times a day, a little bit after each meal or before each, me- each, each boob meal. And, uh, and you know, um, obviously all kids get some gas, but the first, the first three months, they, as they call it, the fourth trimester, right? They're really building their guts. There's no really better way to say it. They're just still developing their guts, right? 
Yeah. Which is why they're kind of always like, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's time. so obvious. Once you, once you understand it in that, in that way, you look at them and you can just tell, you're just like, oh my God, like you're, you're, you're Desi. Stomach. It's all just all about your stomach. Like it's all about your stomach. stomach. It's true. Speaking of, do you want to talk about the? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I can tell a short story about the windy. Um, <laughs> let's see. It was like you know three in the morning. We were very sleep deprived. It was first kid, so we were both waking up every time we did anything with the baby. I wasn't smart enough to just be like, feed the kid while I sleep, right? <laughs> Which happened subsequently. But um, on the first kid, everyone wants to be doing everything. And so, um, uh, <laughs> um, I got the windy we got the Windies and we just like had them in the house, right? And, and and it's like this little plastic kind of, looks like a tube with a little tube coming out of it, right? Um, and you pop it in the baby's butt when they can't get the gas out. So the problem is the, their muscles, they don't really even know how to, how to, how to push it, which is why they have things like explosive diapers, right? Because yeah. they just like hold it, hold it, hold it because it's a scary feeling. Imagine if you'd never felt a fart or a poop, you'd be like, oh, that's scary, right? <laughs> and, then, and then it builds up and builds up till they can't take it anymore and they just let go and it's like, bah, right? So this like bypasses the sphincter so they can't, they can't like hold it in and it puts a little, little tiny hole in there and just slowly, you hear it. Yeah. So JJ was like, and was so upset. And finally I was like, all right, I'm trying this. And I put like a little, you know, like lube on the, on the end of it, popped it in and it just immediately, I just heard. <laughs> and then bubble, bubble, bubble. And everything came through that thing too. It's so gross. And then it all came out and he slept um, like a baby should. Yes. After that. Um, and actually, and actually like a couple nights later, he ended up sleeping. We got very lucky with JJ. He ended up sleeping about 12 hours. We woke up like five times and checked his back to make sure he was still breathing. And, and he kept, he, he kept sleeping and he slept 12 hours and then uh, barring like being sick and teeth, he slept like that. It still sleeps like that. Yeah. yeah. From so five I, weeks. I just want to show Very lucky. Every, I want to show everyone what one of these looks like yeah. so they can get the full. <laughs> I mean, it's such a simple design, but it's amazing. And so everybody should have these because it will <laughs> hit, it will hit in the middle of the night and you're not going to want to go you're not gonna be able to go out and get one so just have these ready i'm sorry it's so gross no that's but, it but yeah this is it like you just stick that up there and then it's hollow so yeah. you know the windy the windy john yeah. says so it's like baby ice fishing jig yeah kind of Pop says gripe water time. It used to say on the bottle for the wind of the baby. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so what else? I think um, the I other. Think you could talk about one of the worst moments you had was a couple weeks in. Even there's another thing that, you know, the midwives at the hospital, I think in good intentions, but inadvertently made you feel a little like failing because they were like if you are getting a good latch and doing it right you yeah. should have no pain so if you yeah. have pain it's your fault essentially yeah, if, you read, if you read everything anything on the internet about breastfeeding it's like you shouldn't feel pain if you're doing it right you shouldn't feel pain to what? What, i'm sorry what to woman, respond bullshit <laughs> what, what woman has not it's you know i just it in my experience, it was, it did not remain painful, but there was about a week in there. Yeah, I would say about two weeks in 
where like it just felt like there were tiny shards of glass in my nipples every single time they went in for it like it was horrible I would I would scream I would literally scream when they latched so you know and then and then the other thing I'll say about breastfeeding in general is our third kid I stopped breastfeeding because she wasn't able to get the milk that she needed for a lot of reasons. And, and so I stopped and like, that was a bummer. And I wish I didn't feel like that was a failure on my part, but like, there was a little part of me that felt that way because that's the way all of this is framed. So, you know, big old disclaimer, like use formula. If you need to use formula, use formula. Like, do the thing, do whatever you need to do for yourself and for your baby. Um, but if you do want to give breastfeeding a shot, I would say, you know, for me, um, I, you know, a lot of people love, there's so many amazing, beautiful, um, like kind of nipple balms out there and we carry a few of them, um, and they smell lovely and they feel amazing and they're really quite lovely and soothing for those really tough, <laughs> dark times. You you were like, um, try them all and I'm dying here. What did we, and I ended up running to Walgreens in the middle of the night one yeah. time, right? And getting lanolin, just getting yeah. lanolin. Which and we carry too, yeah. We carry a big tub of lanolin too. Um, but yeah, I say just like have that on hand just in case. Um, you know, the other th the fact is your baby consumes some of it though, right? So like it has to be, the nipple cream has to be something that is safe to consume. Yeah. Because your baby will eat it a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, and sure. so that's why people are looking at all these different, uh, you know, nipple balms and creams it, and the, you see them and they're very good ingredients in them usually. Mm -hmm. And you see organic 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 because you know the baby's taking it right yeah i think one of the issues people have and why why you sort of saw a little stigma against it is because all the resources you were looking at didn't want to give the baby something that wasn't organic and there's no way to certify organic a lanolin mm. um, because it's from a sheep right like it, it yeah is yeah and so i i think there i think it's tricky there and that's why we ended up being like this was the thing that worked um mm -hmm. you know yeah. and and i don't i don't i didn't i don't think we felt bad about using it no no when you when you're struggling and you find something that works you don't you don't feel bad about it yeah <laughs> just feel relief so that was was huge um the other thing that we i don't have it with me but um that I always recommend, they're, they're also just so funny, are these things called booby tubes that um, they're just like like tubes of, what's even inside of them? Like- Gel? Um, I don't think that's gel, I think there's like- Oh no, no, there's those like little pellets, right? Yeah, like little pellets. Yeah. Um, and they smell lovely, you know, they kind of smell like lavender and you can throw them in the freezer or you can throw them in the microwave. And um, depending on whether you need heat to maybe like um, help out with a clogged duct or just kind of like get the, the milk flow going or um, you're dealing with, a, you know, mastitis or like some sort of pain that really, you really crave a cold, um, you know, kind of compress, those things can just provide a lot of relief and they're yeah, just yeah. funny they kind of like coil around your nipple and yeah, you can yeah. it shirt. looks like um it looks like uh like sort of a, a cinnamon roll kind yes. of yes um <laughs> and it's actually they're 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 gel free i was picturing a different product we also had in the freezer mm -hmm. that little gel those little gel things but this is um those are cotton 100% i think organic cotton and inside is actually flax seeds Yes, right, 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 right. So I recommend having those on hand just in case. Um, and then finally, I don't think we carry these anymore. I think we did at some point, but um, those um, just like pads, um, what are they called? Nursing pads um, that, it, you know, if you are, if you leak, which like I leaked all the time, having those little nursing pads to stick in your shirt or your bra 
Um, by the way, nursing tank tops, absolutely 100% wear those all the time, wore those all the time. Yeah, um, yeah, or you just clip it down. Yeah, those are great. Amazing. They sell those at I remember our laundry had like yeah. 50 of these things because you'd like use these pads and then you just like toss them in the bin, toss them in the bin. And you're doing yeah. so much laundry anyway with a kid, so. And my, my point about all of the nursing stuff is, you know, maybe you'll end up nursing your baby. Maybe you won't, maybe you won't have these sorts of issues. For me, it was like when, when a nursing issue came up, it came on really fast and really intensely. And I wasn't always, you were you know, you weren't always there right there with me to help me. And I had a baby, then I had two babies and I had three babies. Um, and so just having that stuff ready, just in case, like none of it is super expensive. Just just have a little kit or get your friend or your spouse or whoever a little kit of must have nursing yeah, I think because really, when you need them, you need them. That's a really lovely um, gift to give a new, a new mom is like mm -hmm. a little, you know, like here's the essentials in case. I want you to have them there. Right. Yeah. 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 And then the other thing, this isn't for everybody, but I, when I was nursing, I drank a Guinness a day. Yep. And um, Side Street Saloon, our favorite bar and favorite pizza place in Chicago, yeah. um, also uh, gave us an British, gave us a British style um, half Guinness, half pint of yeah. Guinness, yeah. which is like, you know, in, in London, you can order anything in a half pint no, it's and so guess how much it costs? I don't know. Half of a pint. Oh. <laughs> in this country, you would have a pint for one price and then it would be like five cents less for a half pint. Mm -hmm. right? It's like the, the, I remember the last time I went for fast food, it was like, I went to like Wendy's or something and they were like, are you sure you don't want to supersize it? It'll be 60 cents less for your meal if I give you a gigantic fries with it and a huge size drink. And I was like, what is wrong with this country? <laughs> like, why? <laughs> oh, that drives me crazy. Um, <clears throat> Eugene is here. Hey, Eugene, how's it going? Eugene, Eugene is, uh, is awesome and always has the most riveting uh, graphics when he's in the kids' dance party. He's saying any suggestions for bath soap or lotions for kids with sensitive skin and eczema? Yeah, mm. you do. Yeah, there's a great brand. Is it called? It's called like No Eczema, right? Uh, no. Um, What's it called? I think that is from Wise Ways. Is that the one? Let me look. I think so. Well, why don't you tell about the wash first? The wash? Like a, a body wash that's good for. Um, hold on, I want to find this. Um, yeah, I can't find it, but you can find it. Well, um, you know, I'll say that one of the, one of my favorite, um, bring, I was going to bring this up as like um, a, um, uh, just like a good gift. But I'll say one of my favorite brands for all things baby is Waleda. Their stuff is <clears throat> is so lovely. Uh, you know, honestly, it's like a, it's it is it feels a little bit like an indulgence. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's probably not going to be your like, if you're slathering on as much diaper cream as we slathered on our kids, like it might not be your everyday diaper cream or your everyday products, but. Um, but it is just so, such a lovely, those products are so, so lovely. Yeah, and so they I have think, products for babies and for, and for moms. Yeah, so they have a, um, for babies, they have a diaper rash cream. Their, their regular diaper cream is already like, their baby cream is already so thick. But they have a diaper rash cream, which is great. But they have this white mallow body lotion. You know which yeah. one I'm talking about? Yeah. That one we used for JJ when he had eczema. We also have used the, um, what is the Aven eczema formula? Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. 
Um, that one was awesome. We'll link it up below. Eugene, mm -hmm. Greta's usually the one linking it up. So um, check afterwards. We'll add. Yeah, I'll, I'll add that to our list. We'll add some links to it. But um, uh, yeah, and there you go. And Pop says, Aven makes a great lotion for eczema. Yeah, so we have that. And then we have, and then the other one that's great, I think is from Wise Ways, and it's called Look No Eczema. Four Elements. Four Elements, sorry. Mm -hmm. Four Elements. Look no eczema. That's right. It's for Island. That's the yeah. Wisconsin company, right? Yeah. yeah. They're awesome. They make great tea. We drink it all the time on tea time. But mm -hmm. um, look no eczema is awesome as like a concentrated jar of like salve. Um, and so if it's like a problem spot, that's a good one. If you're looking for all over, then Aven or the Willeta are, are lovely for that. Eugene, um, happy Friday to you too. John says, you two make a lovely couple. Oh. Well, thanks. We like we, to think so. We sometimes agree with you. <laughs> we made it official for that reason. Um, yeah, so um, what else did you want to discuss? I mean, we're getting a little bit into kid stuff. Um, bath soap, you know, we do use the... Um, we Thank use the... We use birds. Um, unscented if you have really sensitive you can use their eo kids unscented which is like a three-in-one bubble bath body wash shampoo and it's just like a giant jug of stuff with no scent the if depending on the sensitivity you could use the lavender or the chamomile ones um or if there cannot be essential oils in it they make an unscented which is lovely um, and there, and in terms of like, I know with like multiple kids, you're kind of looking for that bulk value as well. And they're unscented every, every day or every person, whatever it's called lotion is just great. Um, and kind of the whole family can just slather that on. Um, I would recommend also if you're not doing it as soon as the kids are getting out, out of the bath. We take jojoba oil, just a really clean jojoba oil, and we rub them down and then pat, the, pat them dry with a towel after. So you want to put that on wet skin so that you're not just slathering oil on, but a little bit goes a long way. It's like a little squirt, and then you, you, you wipe their whole body and then just pat them dry with a towel, and you'll feel the skin just gets so lovely. Yeah. And jojoba is also great for a cradle cap. So that's something that like, it was, that's one of those products that just. Gotta was, have around. Well, yeah, you gotta have it. And it's, it will grow, you know, there will always be a use for it as your kids grow. The other thing, so, so, so basic, but that, you know, kind of the minute you get pregnant, I would recommend is getting some essential oils. Um, you know, it's just like, for me, lavender when I was pregnant was really, really soothing. Um, and, and then as I was, I went back to work and I was pumping, having a little bit of lavender oil when I would sit and pump and try to relax was like super helpful. And now we use lavender oil. We put it on the kids' temples and their feet when they're going to bed every single night. So that's another thing that like jojoba oil, essential oils are just things that just kind of like are good for our whole family and have gotten us through from baby and still yeah. yeah exactly yeah that lavender um that lavender oil is like comes in like a hundred mil we have the big size and you really want to get like a really good you know quality if you're going to be using it on the skin in addition to you know diffusing it um so you know th that's i know you can find a, uh find them out there but make sure that the one you get is a good quality one because yeah, the brand we carry is aroma and they're awesome. That they're guy's amazing. amazing. He and sources his stuff really well, and it's good stuff. Um, so we use that lavender oil in everything. Um, the you know all, most most um, humidifiers now um, are ultrasonic, and so they have like that little. And if they are, they're not very expensive these days. Humidifiers and the ultrasonic ones, you can dump essential oil into them, and it will diffuse it into the um, air and it is 
we rub the lavender on their feet and temples and any bug bites and we put it in the humidifier we put it under on the pillow under the pillowcase yeah. you and i rub it on each other's temples and use it for massage it's like everything you know i i i like i don't even realize how often we use it you know yeah yeah for sure for sure for sure i mean um, I, chloe know, Patton is saying hi <laughs> and, oh, nice. and she's like i gotta rewatch this later and take notes <laughs> she's like she's you know uh, everything <laughs> she i think she's already a pro yeah um um, but she does. She said the boys do have uh, sensitive skin and eczema. The other thing that we do for that is our kids all take fish oil every day, right? Um, so uh, in the baby bottles, we put a little squirt of fish oil, and in and then the other kids are so hardcore, they just take capsules of fish oil and chew it up. And I bet you the Patton boys would do that too because they eat sushi. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's um, true. Jay, I accidentally took the kids fish oil the other day and swallowed it and was like, whoa, like that is fishier than the fish oil capsule that I normally take. I can't believe they bite this. Like, oh, they also take mushroom extract liquid and they go, yeah. they, can we have the yucks? It's not yucky anymore. It's yum. And I was like, okay, whatever. Well, that we should do another another segment at some point just about kind of like immunity and, and like basic kind of vitamins and maintenance stuff for yeah that's kids. a good idea let's put that on the list yeah. um, um anything else you wanted to mention you have a few other things on the list hey. um, <laughs> um you know the uh, the other thing i pulled from downstairs oh well these i think a lot of people know about these um but this is another great gift and a great thing to have also from the same brand that makes the windy is the nose Frida. Oh yeah. That's an absolute must have. It is a must have. Um, <clears throat> also hilarious. So fun. Stories could be told about, about this, but essentially it's instead of using one of those bulbs where you just kind of stick it in your kid's nostril and then you and then let go and then let go. And it's super alarming. This thing, you know, the picture Although kind of showed you did that in moments too. Yeah, that's true. And you can steal that from the hospital as well. Um, the, They're definitely just going to throw yours out anyway. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh my God, so much waste. Um, you know, this, you stick this, <laughs> this like little tube in your kid's nostril and then th that is... There is a sponge filter in between, so you are not literally sucking the snot. Although that has fallen out, and I have had a mouthful of snot, I will just put that out there. And that is not even the ninth grossest thing that's happened to me. No, that's love. Um, yeah, and you're able to you're able to kind of take this tube, and you're able to apply pressure and suck, you know, at whatever level you need to to get it out of the kid's nose and. Um, and one of our kids, JJ, found it hilarious. The other he one laughed through it. I don't know. He was like the easiest baby ever. So. I know. That's why we were tricked into having two more. Um, <laughs> and then the other thing, um, you know, when you, um, you know, so for me, I, uh, I continued to, to breastfeed and pump once I went back to work. Um, and that is a whole thing um, that we can talk about. It's, just so weird and crazy but um but you know I used to work at Steppenwolf Theater and they Corey Jean's facility manager I bow down he created this lovely room that was super comfortable like lazy boys and like it was really yeah awesome. we could dim the lights you know and um and so a lot of the times I would sit and I would work but I really tried sometimes to just relax and like sit there for 15 minutes or 20 minutes um, and so when I, when I was committed to that, you know, um, I did ha have some essential oils down there with me. I would like play some music or listen to a podcast. And then I had one of these that's called a hot pocket and it's, you know, like people use it, they heat it up and they put it on their necks and stuff, but I would just sit there and like, let it kind of sit on top of my, my boobs and, um, 
and it would be warm and it again kind of smells like lavender smells really nice and um and it would just sort of help calm me down and get the milk flowing um so i definitely recommend that and i left it at in steppenwolf's nursing room so i know that many other women have used it after me <laughs> um you know, I think that like, that's worth a separate conversation, um, because it is um, insane what we ask mothers to do and how soon we ask um, people to come back and and really like, um, you know, yes, 15, 20 minutes to pump. But how about like getting down there, getting settled, putting your crazy Madonna hands-free bra so you can keep working in between then like washing out every part of that and keeping track of all these tiny little like rubber stoppers i mean it is i know you're hard you're so, it's hard i had to like create a checklist for myself going to work every day because you're so exhausted and if you don't have one of those parts you're screwed you know like you you need every single one of those those parts in order to to pump and if you can't pump like that hurts <laughs> it's bad so yeah it's it's a lot it's a it's a lot of work um it is a lot of work um so i salute you and every other mom who yeah. does it and every other mom who decides not to do that i completely yeah. salute you too um <laughs> Um, so, you know, I think that's, we can probably call it right about there. We're, mm -hmm. we're getting close to an hour. I just wanted to tell, um, people that, um, we all come from women. <laughs> Every single person that has ever existed came from a woman. And that is just something we should all remember all day, every day, and every time we talk to any woman. That's beautiful. Um, uh, <laughs> um, anyway, there's some craziness in the comments right now. Um, hey, I want everyone to remain kind in the comments. And also that, um, and also that this is a conversation and we welcome as many comments as people want to talk about with us so um let's be kind and anyway greta it was great talking to you this is more Thank than we've you. talked in six years i know and, oh, nice uh, an hour um on monday you and t are going to be talking with um one of the educators from host defense yeah super mushrooms. exciting um if you're into mushrooms of any kind you're going to want to tune in um because this is going to be really cool um, we're going to learn a lot about mushrooms and immunity and all the things that mushrooms do and the way that um, they are the language of the trees and they potentially will save the world. Um, I truly believe that. Uh, I, I, I consume um, as many mushrooms as we can just food wise and I'm a proponent of taking them medicinally as well. And I think uh, I'm really excited for that conversation. I got a lot of questions. And, um, and I think that uh, any way we can get more in our diets is going to be a good thing, especially the way um, environmental things are happening um, right yeah. now. And with the compromised immunity, of, it seems like so many people um, in the midst of a pandemic. I just feel like this is... Um, the preventative, one of the preventative answers we may all be looking for. So. Yeah, I'm super I'm excited. excited. Greta, I love you. I um, love you too. I think that's fairly obvious, but um, <laughs> it's really great talking nice to, to you it. and great having you all. And we um, love you all. We'll see you Monday where we talk about shrews. Bye, everybody. Bye.